The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you tonight by Parquet Margarine, that marvelous margarine made by Kraft. Parquet is the margarine millions prefer because it tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. In fact, Parquet Margarine is so good in every way and for every purpose that Kraft can afford to make this offer. Double your money back if you don't say Parquet is the best margarine you ever tasted. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Ask for it at your grocer's tomorrow. Well, it's been a long, hard day at the water department. The great Gildersleeve didn't even get home for dinner. But now, back at long last, the water commissioner lowers himself into his easy chair and sinks to the bottom like a rock in his reservoir. I'm tired, Unky. Worn out, Marjorie. The first of the month sort of slipped up on Bessie and me. Oh? Yeah, came right after February 28th. Didn't expect it for two more days. (laughs) (sighs) Excuse me. That's all right. Bronco's coming by for me in a few minutes. No, he is. Uh Uh-huh. Are you too tired to drive over to Broadmoor with us and see Mother and Father Thompson? Marjorie, I've seen Mother and Father Thompson. I remember them well. (laughs) Now, Unky, you really should cultivate the Thompsons. That's barren ground. (laughs) (laughs) He never answers your questions, and she never gives you a chance to ask one. (laughs) What? Eh? Uh, Marjorie, just because you and Bronco are engaged is no reason I have to be married to the Thompsons. All right, Unky. I'll tell them you send your love. Yeah, do that. Miss Gilsley. Yes, Bertie. A party phoned before you came home and wants you to call back. Oh, yes, probably Judge Hooker. He wanted me to play checkers. But wild horses couldn't get me away from this house tonight. I'm not going to be dragged out by an old goat. <laughs> he wasn't the party, Miss Gilsley. Well, whoever it was, I'm not leaving the house. Unky just passed up an invitation to visit the Thompsons. Yeah, hated to do it. Yes, sir. <laughs> You don't want to call this party back then? I'm too tired to go to the telephone, Bertie. Who was it? Miss Milford. Miss Milford? (laughs) Unky, where are you going? Well, I said I wouldn't go to the telephone, and I won't. Where's my hat? That man. (laughs) Why, Throckmorton. Hello, Catherine. I phoned you this evening. Yeah, Bertie said you wanted me to ring you back, so I'm doing it. (laughs) (laughs) Throckmorton. May I come in, or do you want to talk long distance? Oh, come on in. I won't keep you a minute. You won't? Mm -hmm. Bertie said you didn't get home for dinner. You must be awfully tired. Me? No. Well, I'm glad, because I want to talk to you about tomorrow night. Great. What are we going to do tomorrow night? I've invited Marjorie over, remember? Oh, yes, yes. You're going to help Marjorie with some sewing. Well... Why don't you and I sew for a couple of hours tonight, hmm? What? Look, the button off my cuff. <laughs> Throckmorton, that won't take two hours. It could. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Be good practice for tomorrow night. Marjorie and I aren't going to sew tomorrow night, Throckmorton. Oh? I told her that because I want to surprise her. I'm giving her a bridal shower. You are? Hmm? Well, won't Marjorie be happy? You're awfully sweet to do that, Catherine. I could almost kiss you. Now, oh, Throckmorton. Shucks, missed again. <laughs> I wanted to know if you mind Bertie helping us out tomorrow night. Bertie, of course I don't mind. Anything at all, Catherine. That's wonderful. And Throckmorton. Huh? You know, giving this shower makes me realize how much I need a man around the house. You uh, do? I mean, just to help with the preparations tomorrow night, of course. Oh, oh yeah. You really won't mind helping out? Be delighted to help. I think I should be here anyway. After all, what's the shower without the water commissioner? (laughs) (laughs) Ah, good morning. 
Good morning, Floyd. Well, if it ain't the commish. Hop right up in the chair, commish. Thank you. All it be, haircut? You can start with a haircut, my man, then give me the works. Yeah? You had a manicurist, I'd even go for a manicure. Stepping out among them tonight, commish? Well... Gonna do a little billing and cooing with your turtle dove? Floyd. <laughs> I'll bet you're no turtle among the doves. Oh. <laughs> All jokes alongside, commish. How's the trained nurse? You mean Miss Milford, of course. Uh, She's fine. Thank you for inquiring. That's okay. Don't trim it too short, Floyd. Leave the wave on the top. Don't worry. Hey, hey, you got another gray hair here. I have? Yep. Pretty soon your wave's gonna have white caps. <laughs> Very funny, white caps. Stick to your hair cutting, Floyd. Okay. <laughs> Little Floydy Munson ain't one of them Gabby barbers. Good. Where are you going tonight, Commission? If you must know, I'm going over to Miss Milford's, Floyd. She's giving a shower for Marjorie. Oh? What's she gonna have you doing? Tipping the teapot for the in-laws? <laughs> no, Floyd. That's what I like about this party. The Thompsons aren't gonna be there. It's just for Marjorie's girlfriends. You don't like rubbing elbows with the in-laws, huh, Commission? Well, Mrs. Thompson has pretty sharp elbows. Looks down her nose at everybody. <laughs> she thinks she's the queen of Sheba. Yeah? They tell me the old man is something out of this world. That's where his mind seems to be. <laughs> he never knows what's going on. Oh, found a faded hair. That's two of them. Yeah, every time I think of those Thompsons, another one turns gray. <laughs> I'm ready for Marjorie's surprise shower tonight. Yeah, and she'll like these candlesticks. Most people will just bring something for the bride. But I got something for the groom, too. A candlestick apiece. His and hers. <laughs> if I could just sneak in the house without Marjorie seeing me. Hi, Unky. Oh, hello, Marjorie. What's in the box? Box? And then what box? The one you just hid behind your back. Oh, Back isn't as broad as it used to be. It's all slipped around to the front. Come on, Unky. What's in the box? Uh, well, uh, cigars, my dear. Cigars two feet long? Well, I've been buying longer cigars, so I won't smoke them so short. <laughs> oh? Uh, better get in the kitchen in high days. Uh, see you a little while, my dear. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Yeah, she doesn't suspect a thing. So wait for a shower. Come my way Birdie Those April showers Birdie Yes, sir Marjorie will hear you Don't mention showers Mr. Gilsleeve That's just a red herring Red herring? To throw off the track What? Miss Marjorie knows She's going to get a shower sometime And if I sing April showers She'll think it's going to be next month <laughs> Very logical, Birdie <laughs> Birdie, where can I hide this box? It's cigars for Marjorie. I mean, some candlesticks for Marjorie. Oh, a shower present. That's nice. Let's just put it here in the pantry. Yeah, I'd like to give her something a little nicer, but I'm saving up for the wedding present. Can't let those Thompsons outdo me, Bertie. No, sir. If y'all keep feuding this way, it's going to be like the Hatfields and the McCoys. Yeah. <laughs> Bertie, it'll never come to that. As long as they stay on their side of the mountain. <laughs> What's that? Oh, Catherine at the back door. Rockmore. Catherine, come on in. I knew Marjorie was home, so I came to the back door. Glad you did. Hello, Bertie. How's the cake? Just fine, Miss Milford. Just take a look in the oven. <gasps> oh, that's beautiful, Bertie. My favorite cake. Granite. I mean, marble. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse the expression, Bertie. <laughs> hmm, could hardly wait to get to that shower. Throckmorton, you aren't planning to stay for the shower. Why not? Well, I, I just wanted you to come over early and help with the preparations. Uh, moving chairs and putting up tables. But... You wouldn't want to stay with a house full of girls. I wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> of course, you could talk to Mrs. Thompson. Mrs. Thompson? Is she going to be there? Do you know Throckmorton? I nearly forgot her. Wouldn't that have been terrible? Tragic. Well, Catherine, you've convinced me that shower is no place for me. No, of course not. You men can take care of yourselves. Yes, yeah, men? Yes. 
Yes, I'm counting on you to entertain Mr. Thompson. Oh, nobody can entertain Mr. Thompson. Now, Throckmorton, it'll only be for about four hours. Four hours with a gasping mackerel. <laughs> uh, Floyd's right. I can feel the white caps whipping up already. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will return in just a minute. It's the margarine that tastes so good because it's fresh, really fresh, always fresh. It's parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, when you buy a margarine, there's one thing you want to be sure of. It must be fresh. And that's one thing you can be sure of when you buy parquet margarine made by Kraft. For Kraft's nationwide freshness control guarantees that whenever or wherever you buy parquet, you can always be sure of that fresh, delicious parquet flavor. Parquet margin is blended from fresh, top-grade American farm products. It's rushed fresh by truck to your grocer. Each parquet package is flavor-dated and stocks are regularly inspected. Any parquet not sold before it passes its freshness peak is returned to Kraft. So remember... Parquet margarine is the margarine that tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's fresh. Really fresh. Always fresh. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Double your money back if you don't say it's the best margarine you ever tasted. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. He was all set to attend Marjorie's bridal shower when he found out he had to entertain Marjorie's prospective father-in-law. And he doesn't like the prospect. Uh, A whole evening with an absent-minded book lover. What a miserable night this is going to be. Say, misery loves company. Why don't I get some company? Hello, P.V. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you? Well, I was just thinking about something, P.V. Yeah, Joe? You <laughs> look like the cat that ate the canary. Well, you look like the canary. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. P.V., you've heard me talk about Marjorie's future father-in-law, haven't you? Well, yes. A wonderful fellow, Mr. Thompson. Eh? My, my. We're spending the evening together, P.V., and I'd like to have you join us. Why? Uh, <laughs> well, he's a brainy fellow, Peavy, and I'd like him to meet some of my more intelligent friends. Have you tried to judge? No, I haven't, Peavy. Judge Hooker can't carry on as sparkling a conversation as you can. Besides, he's out of town. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I believe you said this Mr. Thompson collected first editions. That's right, Peavy. Expert on modern art. You bet. He can tell you anything you want to know about it. Hmm. There must be something I had to do tonight. Peavy, don't you try to think of an excuse Oh, oh I know yes, yes. But come to think of it, Mr. Gildersleeve I do have an obligation this evening Who? Oh? Mrs. Peavy wanted me at home to play off a rubber of flinch Flinch? We've been playing for 20 years and the games are tied Oh, brother Well, after playing for 20 years I know you wouldn't want to give up an evening of flinch Well, no, I wouldn't say that <laughs> You fellas care to drop by here around 9 o'clock? <laughs> See you at 9, Peavy Uh, eight o'clock. Where are those Thompsons? Mr. Thompson, so absent my say, what if he drove in the wrong direction? Nah, Mrs. Thompson is with him. She'll steer him in. Yeah, there they are. Better go out and greet them. Oop, he's walking across the street. Oh, now she's got him right by the coattail. Hello, over here. What a guy. He can't even remember my name. If he calls me Uncle Snort once more... Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, uh, hello, Mrs. Thompson and Mr. Thompson. Oh, good evening, Gildersleeve. Martha, you remember Marjorie's Uncle Snort. Oh! 
I spoke to him, Edward, and he's Marjorie's Uncle Mort. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Thompson, everybody's over at Miss Milford's, and I'll be happy to drop you. Uh, by the shower, I mean. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> well, <clears throat> shall we go? Go where? You just stay close to me, Mr. Thompson. Shall we take our car? Well, I suspect we'd better take my Studebaker. Mr. Thompson and I will need it this evening. Oh? Uh, what are you boys going to do this evening? Well, Mr. Thompson, how would you like... Now, there's a very interesting lecture with slides at the Civic Auditorium. Oh? Yes. Casting light on darkest Africa. It, well, <laughs> that does sound interesting. It's out at 10.30. Uh. I took the trouble to look it up in your Summerfield paper. Of course you boys go where you want to go. We'd better go to the lecture, Gildersleeve. <laughs> yes, so. Uh, care to sit in front, Mrs. Thompson? No, thank you. If I'm not driving, I like to sit in the back seat. I bet she can drive from either seat. <laughs> well, if everybody's set, we'll back out. We're backing out, Martha. Hmm. Flooded, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> no, no, Mrs. Thompson. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're backing onto your lawn, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm watching. <laughs> Careful of the tree on the other side. <laughs> Watch out for the curb. Here, here comes a car. Talking radar. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, are you sure you know where Miss Milford lives? Oh, yes. Been there several times. Careful of the corner, Mr. Gildersleeve. There's a traffic light. I know. I had it put there. <laughs> now turn green. Keep going. Please, Mrs. Thompson. I know how to drive. Zeke. Oh, good heavens. That woman would make any man strip his gears. <laughs> the car is stopped now. You can get out, Mr. Thompson. Out? Oh, yes. Well, I got rid of Mrs. Thompson, but I still have him. This evening certainly went sour. Uh, what was that, Gildersleeve? Uh, I said, I uh, hope your wife has a fine time at the shower. <laughs> <laughs> she will. Who's the bridal shower for, Gildersleeve? Why, it's for Marjorie. Oh, I knew it couldn't be for Martha. It, no. <laughs> Not this one. Well, we'll stop in here. Uh, hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Peavy, I want you to meet Marjorie's future father-in-law, Mr. Thompson. Good evening, Mr. Peavy. I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Thompson. Mr. Gildersleeve's told me a lot about you. He has? What did he say? Shall I tell him, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it might really embarrass Mr. Thompson, Peavy. I've been bragging on him quite a bit. Haven't I, Peavy? Well, no, I... <laughs> Mr. Thompson, uh, Peavy's going to spend the evening with us. Uh, oh, who's Peavy? Yeah. <laughs> this is Peavy. Oh, oh, to be sure, to be sure. <laughs> uh, I'll be ready as soon as I count the cash. That's fine, Peavy. Uh, by the way, where are we going? Well, it's been suggested that we go to a lecture. Lecture? Yeah, at the auditorium, Peavy. Casting light on darkest Africa. <laughs> if you gentlemen will excuse me, I think I'll go home and play flinch with Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> But, Peavy, we're counting on you. Gildersleeve, you two go if you want to. Uh, don't count on me. What? I don't have to go to a lecture. I married one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thompson, you surprise me. <laughs> All right, Floyd. Hi, fellas. Hello, Floyd. You closing up, Peavy? I thought I'd walk home with you. Well, I'm not going home right now. Floyd, I'd like to have you meet Mr. Thompson. Floyd Munson, Mr. Thompson. How do you do, Mr. Munson? Hi. Thompson, huh? You got the same name as that in-law the commission's been battling with. <laughs> <laughs> Great joker, Mr. Thompson. Barber, you know. <laughs> Barber thought his name was Munson. Oh. <laughs> the barber's name is Munson. Yeah. Floyd, this is Marjorie's future father-in-law. Oh. oh. Gee, I'm sorry, Commish. I could cut my tongue out. I could help you. Uh, I'm ready to... <laughs> We've locked up the store. Shall we go? Where are we going? Floyd, we three have an evening planned. Oh, what do we have planned, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, since you don't care for the lecture, we might go to the library. 
How are you going to have any fun at the library? Floyd, Mr. Thompson is a collector of first editions. Newspapers? No. <laughs> Floyd, he loves books. He travels all over looking for them. Oh. Oh, hey, speaking of traveling, a salesman was in the shop today. He had a great story about two guys... No, Floyd. To... I, I'd like to hear that. Yeah. Uh, say, Gildersleeve, uh, why don't we take him along? What? Uh, Mr. Munson appears to be quite lively. Say, uh, are there any clubs in town, uh, fellows? Clubs? Oh, you mean men's clubs, where you sit in an evening chair, an no. easy chair, and look out the window? No, 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 nightclubs. I, I better go home to Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> Wait a minute, Peavy. We haven't any nightclubs, Mr. Thompson. Well, where can we find some noise and activity? Noise? Uh, how about the bowling alley? <laughs> Well, what do you know? Well, nice going, Mr. Thompson. Set him up in the other alley. <laughs> Your turn, Peavy. Well, I wait till I find a ball that fits my thumb. That last one carried me halfway down the alley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peavy, you're a caution. <laughs> Having fun, Mr. Thompson? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, cigarette, Gildersleeve? Cigarette? Mr. Thompson, I didn't know you smoked. Neither does Mrs. Thompson. He, he's painting the town tonight. Well, I knocked over 18 out of 20 ducks. What do we do now? I don't know. You've had us through the Penny Arcade three times. Hey, Commish, I thought you said this guy Thompson was a dull tool. He's running us ragged. <laughs> yeah, I'm bush, Floyd. Hey, Mr. Thompson, it's 11 o'clock. Uh, perhaps we should all go home. Home? Nonsense, Gildersleeve. The night is young, and so are we. Well, I'm saying good night. I feel pretty old after 11 o'clock. <laughs> uh, uh, good night, Peavy. <laughs> Wish I'd gone home with Peavy. What time is it, Kamish? Yeah, Floyd, it's one fifteen, according to that clock over the pinball machine. Gildersleeve, I hit the triple whammy. Look at it light up. <laughs> he did. And if he thinks that's a triple whammy, wait till his wife looks him in the eye. <laughs> this guy never runs down, does he, Commish? He must take pills. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have to get him home, Floyd. Uh, Mr. Thompson, don't you think we should be going home? Home? I still have 20 nickels left. Have another Coke, fellows. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the evening's still a pup. Yeah, maybe a pup, but I know who's going to be in the doghouse. <laughs> ah, great evening, Gildersleeve. Yeah, great. <laughs> I was surprised at Munson having to go home at 2 o'clock. Well, you know how it is with a barber, Mr. Thompson, on his feet all day. I'm afraid we should have all gone home earlier. Oh, are we going home? Yes. Oh. What about Martha? Well, I'm afraid the shower has been over a long time. Miss Milford's house was dark when we passed there. I guess your wife's at my house. Oh, she's at somebody's house. You don't seem very concerned about rolling in at two o'clock Oh, what's wrong with two o'clock? It's a nice round hour But <laughs> fewer cars on the street, pleasant motoring But Mr. Thompson, your wife expected us home at 10.30 Frankly, I'm a little worried Oh, now, Gildersleeve, leave everything to me I'll explain to Martha You will? Naturally Staying out late was my idea And I'll assume complete responsibility Well, good for you, Mr. Thompson By George, you're all right you know, there was a time when I thought, yeah, but you're true blue. <laughs> well, here we are. <sighs> oh, yes, uh, here we are. Oop. 
There's Mrs. Thompson waiting for us. <laughs> Looks awfully big standing in that doorway. Oh. What's that she's got in her hand? Oh, it's just a shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Here she comes. Oh, brother. Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Mrs. Thompson. Where have you been with Edward? Well, we were at the drugstore. Until 2 a.m.? Well, we did go down to the bowling alley. Bowling alley? Of course, we weren't there very long. We came right home after playing the pinball machines. You had my Edward playing pinball machines? Now, wait a minute. I wasn't the one who... Take it, Mr. Thompson. Thompson, wake up! Edward! Oh, my goodness, what a sneaky thing to do. The Great Gildersleeve will be back very shortly. Tomorrow can be a red-letter day for you if it's the day you first try parquet margarine. Once you've tried it, we know that you two will always consider parquet margarine a real shopping find. For parquet is the margarine that millions prefer because it tastes so good. And it tastes so good because it's always fresh. Parquet is the margarine so good that Kraft can afford to make this offer. Double your money back if you don't say it's the best margarine you ever tasted. Yes, if you don't agree parquet is the best margarine you've ever tasted... Send the empty carton with a letter stating your opinions, your name and address, and state the price you paid to Kraft, Box 1163, Chicago 90, Illinois. And Kraft will refund double the price you paid. Put Parquet on your shopping list right now. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Good morning, Aki. Good morning, my dear. Uh, You'll excuse me if I rush, Uncle Mort. This is the day I work at the Red Cross. Oh, maybe I'll go down with you. Really? Yeah. After last night with Mr. Thompson, I need a transfusion. <laughs> my bloodstream is pure Coca-Cola. <laughs> You're kidding. Well, I'm kidding about the transfusion. But I want to be serious a moment about the Red Cross, my dear. Here's an organization which is always ready to serve wherever it's needed. And I don't have to tell you what a great job it does. You've read about it every day in your newspapers, wherever disaster strikes, wherever we are in need, the Red Cross is there. It's our Red Cross, our protection. Let's give it our full support in every way we can. Remember the Red Cross. Good night, everybody, and be sure to be with us next week. Next Wednesday, the great Gildersleeve has something up his sleeve which is going to be of very special interest to every one of you homemakers. Be sure you're listening next week. The great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Arthur Q. Bryan, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Want to put magic in leftover meals? Then have plenty of Kraft prepared mustard on hand. Mustard makes hidden flavors pop right out of leftover meats, adds new life to salad or egg dishes. You can get two kinds of Kraft prepared mustard, you know. Salad mustard, mild, delicately spiced, or Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand, for when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft prepared mustard. Stay tuned for the exciting new Break the Bank on NBC.